Hello class, this is Mr. Lehman. Today we want to continue talking about binary ionic compounds and also introduce the concept of polyvalent ions. And so, binary meaning it's made up of two elements and two elements only. And ionic meaning that we have atoms that have either gained or lost uh, electrons and now have a charge. All right, so let's take a look here. So there are some basic rules that we need to follow. Ionic compounds have to be neutral, so the charges of the positive and the negative one have to cancel out, so we have to figure out the correct ratio. The cation to positive ion is always named first, listed first in the formula. And when possible, we want to simplify, reduce the subscripts, uh, use the simplest terms. All right, so if we look at magnesium and fluorine, I want to go back and uh, draw a Bohr model for this one to give you a little better understanding of what's happening here. So magnesium is in group two, the alkaline earth metal, so it's going to lose its two electrons on the outside, the three S2 electrons. And therefore, to get a four octet, the two S2, two P6 would be the four octet, and it gets a plus two charge. So it's a magnesium ion. Fluorine, which has 1s2, 2s2, 2p5, wants to get a full outer shell, so it needs to steal another electron to get 2p6, and so it becomes negative 1. You notice the charges are not equal and opposite, and so we're not going to have a 1 to 1 ratio here, so we need to have more negatives, and so we would need another negative fluoride ion to cancel out that plus 2 charge of the magnesium. Uh, so we write that. How many magnesium ions did we need? We needed one. How many fluoride ions did we need? We needed two to get neutral. We can't simplify this. We listed the positive ion first, the negative ion, the anion second. So this is correct. If you look at an image of how this works, so magnesium, once again, wants to lose the 3s2 electrons. And so this fluorine is able to steal one electron from the magnesium. And so that is transferred, but magnesium still has another electron that it needs to lose, but this fluorine can't steal anymore, so that's why we need to have a second fluoride, or second fluorine atom come in uh, to form and to take that magnesium outer electron. And so this fluorine, so this one is now a negative one. This is a fluoride ion. Sorry, here, messing up my buttons. So we can write negative one here. This magnesium is a plus one, but this electron is going to be stolen by this fluorine. And so now there's no more 3s2. Both electrons are stolen, so there is no more third shell. And so the outer shell now is the second shell. And so 2s2, 2p6, that outer shell is complete. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time with my buttons. This magnesium is a two positive. This fluorine is a minus one. And now they have opposite charges, so they're going to attract together and stick and form that ionic bond. And they actually form a crystal repeating network of bonds. But we'll talk about the crystal structure, the crystal lattice, in the future, uh, not today. All right, so we labeled our periodic table before with the charges, the oxidation numbers that each of the main group elements will get when they're happy and stable and have a noble gas configuration, but we have not talked about the transition metals, and that's because uh, they can have multiple charges. Uh, a lot of these elements can have multiple charges. So the most common oxidation number is plus two, because all these things in the D block have two in the S before it, so they all have two S, but it's more complex than that. So another common charge of the transition metals is a three plus, but we're going to see transition metals can also have a positive one charge, and some can have a positive four charge. So there's actually four possibilities of what the charges could be. Uh, so if we look at two of these, uh, iron can have a plus two charge, or iron can have a plus three charge, depending on the environment that it's in. And so uh, we need to be able to differentiate between these two species of iron. And so we call iron that has a plus two charge iron plus two, or iron Roman numeral two. And we call iron that has lost three electrons with a plus three charge, we call that iron Roman numeral three. Uh, those are the two charges that iron can take. Copper, copper can have a plus one, or copper can have a plus two charge. And so we call it copper Roman numeral one, and we call this copper Roman numeral two. So if we have a compound that is, let's say, copper two, oxygen one, so Cu2O, what's the name of this? 
Well, we know that oxygen is going to become a minus two. It has two, uh, six electrons on the outside. It needs to steal two more. So oxygen always gets a negative two charge. So we can figure out the charge of the copper from that. So if we have two copper ions, what times two gives you a, a plus two? We need a plus two to cancel out the negative two. We would know that the copper in this substance would have to be a plus one. All right, so we would name this substance copper Roman numeral one oxide. Another example, if we have iron oxide that has the formula, well, let's do this. Uh, let me give you the name. So let's do iron three oxide. So once again, we know the oxygen is going to have a negative two charge. The iron has a Roman numeral, uh, Roman numeral three. It tells you that that iron has a plus three charge. What's the lowest common multiple of three and two? Six, right? So how many iron with a plus three charge do we need to get to a plus six? We would need two of them. How many oxides that have a negative two charge would it take to get to a negative six? It would take a total of three of that ion to get to a negative six charge. And so if you write the formula, how many iron threes did we need? We needed two of that ion. How many oxides did we need? We needed three. And so that's the chemical formula for iron three oxide. I hope this helps. Have a great day.